Now when it comes to the concept of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I came across something from Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In his last moments as he's passing away, his final dua, he says, Oh Allah, you know that I love you. I love you even though I used to disobey you. I'm not in any position of strength to support anyone else or help anyone else. I'm not innocent to seek forgiveness on behalf of someone else. I am completely in need of you in these moments. And I know that I love you. And so as he makes this admission, I love you even though I disobeyed you, I bear witness that you are one and that you have no partner and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is your slave and your messenger. Now, when we talk about the love of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, it is connected constantly to the obedience of Allah. Do you love Allah is connected to do you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's throughout the Quran and throughout the Sunnah and throughout the statements of the Salaf. Say that if you truly love Allah, then follow the Prophet وسلم, and Allah will love you back. A claim was made. How do you weigh the claim? By your obedience to the Prophet وسلم, which is of course obedience to Allah. The one who loves obeys the one that they love. This is the basic definition of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return. But there is one issue that needs to be discussed, which is we all disobey Allah at times. We all have moments of distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all commit sins. The question becomes, to what extent do we disobey Allah? How much do we disobey Allah? And at what point in our disobedience of Allah can we no longer even make the claim that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you have this narration where the Prophet sallallahu is dealing with a generation that includes the likes of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu Anhu and Uthman radiallahu anhu and Ali radiallahu anhu and also includes the likes of people that were really really struggling with this new religion that were really struggling to change their lives in accordance with this new system and in this very popular narration a man is brought to the Prophet وسلم, as a recovering alcoholic or as someone who cannot beat his alcohol addiction he constantly keeps on returning to his alcohol over and over and over again and someone says as he's being brought forward oh Allah curse him how often we have to bring this man to you, Ya Rasulullah. What a shame, what a loser, what a nobody. He can't stop drinking alcohol and he lives in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu And what does the Prophet Sallallahu respond with? He says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't curse him because I know that he loves Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that heart, there is something. He does have the love of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the hope is not just that it would save him in the hereafter, but that eventually that love of Allah and the Messenger that certainly dwindles and diminishes every time he gets drunk again, will overtake that sin and will become his dominant feature. The love of Allah and His Messenger. And that indeed became the dominant feature of that man. To hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say about you, when you're in your lowest point, I know you love Allah and the Messenger. What about us when we're in our lowest point, when we feel our greatest distance from Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gives you the opportunity to come back to him and still has joy when you make tawbah to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I know he loves Allah and his messenger, but he's stuck right now. And there is a connection between the sin that he's committing right now and the state of his faith. As the Prophet Sallallahu said in another authentic hadith, an adulterer does not commit adultery while he is a believer. And a person does not drink alcohol at the time that they're drinking alcohol while they are a believer. And a person does not steal at the time of their stealing while they are a believer. And another narration is the Prophet ﷺ said, and he does not kill while he's killing, while he's a believer. Of course, these are major sins. But in that moment that you're doing that type of stuff, are you a kafir? No, we don't make takfir of people. We don't say you're a disbeliever. Of course, unless you make these things halal, unless you actually claim that they're permitted. But the belief is not present with you in those moments. There is a severe deficiency. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu who is the narrator of the hadith, explains it. it's like you're taking the thawb of iman, the thawb of belief, and you're putting it on a rack while you commit those deeds. SubhanAllah, it's a powerful analogy. The idea here is that while you claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you indulge these sins, you can't say that in this moment, I am in a state of love of Allah. But the Prophet is saying that a person could indeed be in one of these states and there's still something in there to be redeemed, to be salvaged. Now, what does this mean for us? What does this mean for someone who's like, well, he's talking about the alcoholics and the adulterers. He's talking about this person and that person. And I don't fit into any of these categories. Even the most righteous people from this ummah would wonder, where am I with this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Muhammad ibn Wasi' rahimahullah ta'ala, a man came 
to him, a great scholar, he said, I love you for the sake of Allah. May the one who you love me for love you back. Then he turned his face and he started to cry. And he said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from being loved for your sake while you're angry with me. Someone loves me for Allah and Allah is upset with me. Allah is angry with me because of some sin that I'm committing and putting a distance between myself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the alcoholic and the person who's that far away has to have hope that there is something in there, indeed a true expression of Allah's love that's dwindling, but it needs to be redeemed. And the one who's in a state of worship and scholarship has to be so worried about losing the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it drives them so that when they pass away, they could be like Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who looks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last moments of his life. And he says, this is the last hour of my life. Oh Allah, you know that I love you. So bless me in this meeting with you. Could you say that at the time of your death? If death was coming to you today, would you be able to say, Oh Allah, you know that I love you. So bless this meeting that I'm about to have with you. I want you to take a moment and to think about the intentional sins that we commit. Put the size of the sins on the side. The scholars differentiate between the sins of the lover of Allah and the sins of the one who transgresses the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sins of the lover of Allah are slip ups, they're mistakes, they're things that happen along the way. And a person wakes up when they fall into those sins and even sometimes the major sins happen, may Allah protect us from them. The sins of the lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they happen less frequently and without intentionality. You get caught in a moment, caught by an environment. Environments. Your desire takes you somewhere that it shouldn't have taken you. But you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere repentance. The intentional sins, the intentional forms of disobedience, the ones that are conscious choices that you make, even if they're small, the repeated recurring ones, they kill the heart. And when you kill the heart, you kill the ability of the heart to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most powerful narration I came across in this regard was Ibn Samak rahimahullah ta'ala. When Ibn Samak was passing away, he says, Oh Allah, you know that when I used to disobey you, that I hoped and I loved to be amongst those that obey you, that I don't want to be amongst those that disobey you. When I find myself in the state of disobedience, I'm not proud of it, I'm not okay with it, I'm not complacent with it. And I want to be from those that obey you. And in one narration he said, even if I was amongst those that used to disobey you, I always loved those people that obeyed you. And I'm asking you, oh Allah, to make me amongst those people that love you and that are beloved to you. I'm asking you for that, even though I know I'm gonna slip up and I'll do my part to wake up in the morning and to ask myself, is this sin worth this relationship with Allah? Is it worth distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then at night when I go to sleep and when I wake up and I make my prayer, Oh Allah, count me amongst those that love you sincerely and that are beloved to you. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of those that are beloved to you and the love of every deed that brings us closer to your love. Allahumma ameen.